and today we have five key topics to cover. First, we're going to discuss the importance of a book of business. Second, we will review how to grow your book of business by uploading and adding leads. This is critical to building your business for long-term consistent transactions. And we will implement a listing postcard strategy designed to connect you to your book of business. Then we review the stats and effectiveness of listing postcards. And finally, we will review accountability measures to ensure consistent long-term results. So let's get started. To make sure you're getting the most out of this course, I will be asking a couple of questions throughout. And any time you see a blue question mark, that means it's your turn to answer. So our first question is, how often do you market to past clients? What is the communication or marketing messages that they receive? So I want you to take a moment to type your answers into the question box. So let's see, I see uh, a monthly newsletter. I see someone put all the time. Uh, let's see here, I see at least every two to three uh, months there's emails and also postcards of current activity. I even see things like holiday cards and um, twice a year sold listing flyers. And I even have some people that said that they do not want to bother a client once um, they're in their new home. Okay, so here's an interesting fact for all of you. The NER reports that 90% of buyers say that they will use the same realtor again. But only 19% do. 85% of sellers say that they will use the same realtor. But only 9% actually do. So the number one reason why realtors lose so much opportunity is that they stop following up with their clients once the home is sold. And the truth of the matter is that even after I buy a home, I'm still interested in other homes that exist on the market. So if you send me messages with home values and current homes for sale in the neighborhood, that would interest me. Even design and decorating ideas will attract my attention. So sharing information with current and past clients that I'm interested in keeps me engaged with you and your business. And if the average agent loses 81% of their client base, what's that say about the referrals? So 41% of buyers and sellers found their agent through a referral. So are you staying in front? of your past clients to ensure that they remember you and can easily access your contact information? Or do you simply fade away along with the opportunity for referrals? So fortune is in follow-up. So it might not be surprising that 90% of agents do any of the following past clients according to the NAR. But with so much at stake, it is imperative that you keep your business in front of your book of business. And as a potential home buyer, or even a past client, by continuing to send me material I'm interested in, and by coupling that material with your brand, you have a better chance of keeping my business during my next transaction. So by consistently staying in front of your book of business with information about homes in the area, you impact mindshare, building, and brand equity. So continue to stay in front of your client base with homes for sale, and it will, in time, brand you as the local neighborhood real estate expert. So the challenge in staying in front of your entire book of business is the time and effort it takes to implement such a program consistently. Lucky for you, Z57 has given you a listing postcard program so simple you can schedule your entire monthly marketing to your book of business in mere minutes. So 
So the listing postcard strategy is designed to accomplish two objectives. First, they keep your book of business in front of your business by providing a snapshot of a listing. And every time a prospect opens a listing postcard, they are engaging with your business as each listing postcard is branded to you with the links that the listing goes to your website. The second objective is to generate traffic to your website. Only the listing highlights are included as we want prospects to click back to your website. And now the potential buyer is on your website and you can fully service all their home buying needs. And the best part about a listing postcard is the track opens and clicks for every postcard you email out. So you can easily see exactly how well you can achieve these objectives. So listing postcards give you the flexibility to email just listed, just sold, just reduced, and open house property announcements as well. It gets even better. With the Z57 Go app, as an on-the-go agent, you can email listing postcards from the palm of your hand. So let's email a listing postcard out right now. To begin, hover over Marketing. Then select Communications from the sub-navigation. And your website provides several email marketing tools. And today we're going to focus on the listing postcards. So click Go to Postcards. Here, you can access all saved listing postcards, or to a new listing postcard, select Create New. So the first step in creating the listing postcard is entering a communication title. This is very important, as the title will appear as the subject of the email. Be bold consist and have a what in it for the buyer mindset, then writing the title. A subject line that excites prospects increase your open rate. The second step is to select the postcard type. If not apply, select none. Next, select the listing from the drop list. And all listings added to the listing manager will be available to the listing postcard tool. Now, select the layout. We recommend layout C, as it displays just enough information about the listing to pique the curiosity of an interested buyer. And once the listing postcard email is opened, the goal is now to get the prospect to click back through the website so you don't have to give away all your details. And guess what? We're almost done. So let's click Next. So at this point, you can scroll down to select Preview and review the listing postcard. But I did want to point out you have the opportunity to customize the property description. A custom description is particularly useful when emailing out an open house postcard, as you can include in the date, time, and details of the open house. Also, you can hide the listing features. I recommend selecting this option, as our objective is to pique the prospects interested, creating a click back to your website. So now, let's preview our email to see what is happening and that everything is in place. So, Looks amazing. Here we have the open house. So we're ready to send. So let's click the next. And to send to all leads, select that group. And now you can save the listing postcard or send now. But I want to point out the send on date option. 
By taking a few minutes at the beginning of each month, you can schedule your listing postcards for the entire month. So send on date allows you to set it and forget it. That way, you're um, spending your time following up with prospects, not sending out listing postcards. And later today, my personal challenge to each of you is to set up and schedule three listing postcards. One a week for the next three weeks. And in the campus, you will find step-by-step -step printable instructions to guide you through the process. So we've covered a lot, so I want to take a moment to get your feedback on listing postcards so far. So what do you think will result from sending out a listing postcard once a week to your entire book of business? I just want you to take a moment to type your answers into the question box. Okay, so I see a couple of really good ones here. Um, let's see here. I see one person said, uh, you submit in their mind that you are their real estate agent. That is absolutely true. Let's see here. I like that. Um, let's see, Jimmy put that you should get some inquiries for friends and family. But we also get a listing presentation because they like the card. This is really true. I just think some of those friends and families could have coworkers, you know, that bump into them. And it's a great way just to remember that you are a referral. Um, I've had a lot of agents who have had that type of a situation happen. And let's see here. Those are some pretty good answers. So just so you all know, when it comes to marketing return on investment, uh, the key is to knowing you're spending your marketing dollars and time correctly. And listing postcards provide a very clear snapshot on what every client did when receiving the email. So 48 to 72 hours after the listing postcard email is out, stats become available for the campaign. And to access the listing postcard stats, hover over marketing. And then click on communication stats. Stats are reported for each email, so click on the title of the postcard to review its stats. Each postcard emailed stats are provided showing emails sent, opened, and clicks. Open show exactly which leads opened and read the email. Click show exactly which leads not just open the email, but also clicked back through the website for additional information. So you may get clients that do not wish to receive these emails, and don't worry, they can unsubscribe at the bottom of the email. The key is to focus on the majority of prospects that are engaging with you. So with your mouse, select the details link next to any of the stats to see more information. And after the webinar today, take a look at the results you received from the listing postcard that we sent out during our last course. Take a look at your stats and look for trends. Pay attention to people who clicked back through to your website and follow up with them. For example, Victoria is a client from three years ago. And by clicking back through the website, what do you think that means? So Chris here is a lead captured on the website three months ago, but you can never get him on the phone. Nevertheless, he is a solid lead and is opening your emails and looking at properties, so he must be just looking. So everyone that you know at some point is a potential buyer, which means you already have a book of business at your disposal. Now is the time to put it to work. So your book of business should include past clients. Potentially, they will buy or sell a home again. Current clients. Current clients have just as much potential to become distracted and engaged with another realtor. So make sure you keep the lines of communication open. Referrals. Just because they were referred to you by their best friend does not mean the deal is done. Friends, family, and neighbors, they buy and sell homes. So are you going to 
you know, be refused to sell a home to your best friend. So really, your entire sphere of influence is your book of business. And everyone you have met or known, no matter who they are, what they do, should be included in your book of business. And at some point, everyone you know is a potential buyer or knows someone who is going to buy or sell a home. So you must consistently market to these individuals because I guarantee you, someone else already is and you will lose their business. So this type of mindset separates top producers from the rest of the pack. So all of you have a book of business already, your email contacts. And the best part is, you can export your email contacts. Every major email provider, such as Outlook, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, AOL, and even Top Producer, has a contact export tool. The exported contacts can then be imported into your marketing control center. When exporting contacts, there are three key points to remember. First, do not get overly critical about the contacts that you're exporting. Include everyone, even your best friend and the buyer who purchased a home yesterday. Second, select CSV or Outlook CSV as the file type when exporting leads. And a CSV file is what can be imported into your lead management system. Third, we only need a bit of information about each contact for our online marketing needs. For each contact, we need a first name, last name, email. A phone number is optional. Now, open the CSV file in Excel and review each column of data before import. And you may notice some contacts may not have information like their first name and last name. If the first and last name are missing, we recommend using valid and client for the first and last name respectively. So I want to take a few moments to walk you through importing a CSV file of contacts into your MCC. It is important that you understand that this process as you will want to add new contacts as your business grows and to import your book of business into the Marketing Control Center. So in the MCC, hover over leads. Next, mouse over more and select import leads. To import a CSV contact file, start by clicking Browse. Navigate to the CSV file stored on your desktop computer to open and select the file. Confirm that the data fields match the CSV columns type. For example, email should be the third column of the CSV file. If not, select the correct column number. In the box title, Reason, type in, you are my valued client. This field is important for federal spam law compliance. We will discuss this further in a few moments. Lastly, create a new group that is descriptive of the contacts being imported, such as my contacts or buyer leads. And to begin the import, Click Import Preview. The first five contacts will display in the Import and Preview. Confirm that the field types match the columns of the data. For example, the email column should contain the email address. Select Finish Import and review the final import success. The system will prevent bad email addresses, duplicates, and rows with incomplete information from being imported, so expect not every contact to be imported. Imported contacts can be viewed and uploaded in the View Leads area of the MCC. 
The listing postcard program is a simple strategy with four key benefits. First, in mere minutes, a month, you can schedule campaigns designed to engage your entire book of business. Second, by staying in front of your book of business, you develop a mind share. And when thinking real estate, your book of business should think of you. And the strategy of effectively generates traffic to your website. Keeping past clients, future clients, and they'll be coming back to your website for all their real estate needs. And lastly, through stats, you can gain insight into the activity of each contact. And what a great way to see who might suddenly be interested in a new home. So the key with these strategies is implementation and consistency. It should not take you no more than a few minutes a week to run the listing postcard strategy effectively like a Z-Pro. We should already have time set aside for your Craigslist posts on Tuesdays, correct? And to hold you accountable in implementing the listing postcard strategy, I encourage all of you to do that with a Tuesday Craigslist reoccurring event to your calendar. So on Tuesdays, email out a listing postcard to your entire book of business. And following the tip I gave regarding the send on date scheduling feature, take time on the first Tuesday of every month and schedule all of your listing postcards. And now, you're running this program effectively like a Z-Pro. So, at this point, I'd like to open the floor. And if you have any questions about anything we covered today, please type and submit them through the questions box. So, one of the questions uh, that I received was, is, what if you have a limited amount of inventory? Well, the first thing you always want to remember is that you want to focus on the types of homes that you want to be associated with, whether it's you know beachfront property, million dollar homes, um, you know even just first time home buyers, uh, maybe condos. Um, when you do not have any um, inventory of your own or limited, I strongly suggest borrowing a listing from another agent either in your office or maybe an agent you did business with previously and still have a good relationship with, or just an agent in general that you haven't uh, contacted. Ask if you can borrow their listing, and if they say yes, I put them into the website. Of course, let them know that you're going to put, you know, courtesy of and, and have their name uh, and their company included into the description. However, you're not going to give them, um, you know, put their contact information there. But you can use those as well. Uh, that's something I, I definitely recommend to all my agents. And at this point, I want to answer uh, any more that I can see. Is there any other questions? We have time for one more. And that just about wraps up our interactive webcast for today. Thank you all for attending. You have been a great audience, and it was a pleasure to host. Our moderator, Max, is still here to answer questions. So if you're waiting a reply or have any additional questions, he will remain here uh, to answer those. And when you exit the webcast, a survey is going to pop up. You always have access to and support at Z57. So please take a note of the three different ways you can reach a marketing consultant to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. And the team is also great at coaching and uh, will help you to achieve the best possible results with the program.